was near the fiery center of the Milky Way galaxy that a race of life came into being on the world of a binary star system. The light of the larger red giant star mixed with the mineral structure of the orbiting planet produced flowering life of staggering intelligence and awareness who christened themselves Owl. Within only a few million years' time, the Aun had developed into beings of great wisdom and ability, cresting a flourishing society of wealth, knowledge, and culture. It was at the peak of their consciousness that the Aun, in their collective minds, decided that as they were unable to reproduce, they would forge life. Their world began to drift into the orbit of the second star, a small yellow ball, and over the course of millions of years, a time to blink to the Aun, they laid upon the three worlds, as well as their own, seeds of life, amino acids, and catalyzing agents to take shape and form in time. After returning from their planetary journeys, the Aun closed their flowering bodies and returned to the inert mineral state from which they had come, while the seeds of life they had planted across the binary system began to evolve. Upon the first Earth-like world of the Yellow Sun came the Yerm, cephalopoidian intelligent beings who flourished in culture and society, developing endless marvels, and for a time there was peace and understanding across their green world. But as their technology developed, private disputes of power and leadership led to conflicts and soon war, and great battles engulfed the planet, leading to the near extinction of most of the Yerm and their civilization. The second planet was filled with water, this time completely save for a few islands across the single endless ocean. Beneath the waves came forth the Itikun, passive aquatic beings who used the waters of their world, which they called Itik, in all manner of technology, housing, nutrition, and culture. It was found that beneath Itik's oceans were enough valuable nutrients to keep their people alive indefinitely, and in small communities the Itikun took care of their own. But Etik's future would one day be overtaken by the third planet, whose inhabitants named the great gas giant Ra. Great storms of chemicals and nutrients billowed across the entire world, churned by the gargantuan Jim, born from the seeds of life, as well as were their passive smaller cousins, the Otoi. But a third species sought to influence the Jim's past for the chemical resources of their storms, and enslaved the Otoi to toil these resources into grand cities of power. They were the winged Sheen, who created an empire on Ram consisting of four families ruling the great storms. While they proclaimed allegiance to each other, the Sheen lords ever sought more power for themselves, and longed to take their empire beyond the confines of Ram. After an aeon of life among these three worlds, a mysterious visitor from the stars arrived from the planet of the year. A small band of human beings, having left a dying Earth hundreds of years prior, were looking for a new home. With a mutual sense of a lost glory and a desire to begin anew, the Yerm and human beings agreed to share the world as one, and the world was christened Eden. Thus did humanity bring space travel to the Yellow Star's three worlds, for no one of Ram, Etik, or Eden had seen or known of each other in their lives, let alone of their creation by the Owl. Cultures began to mingle and spread, and for a time there was learning and understanding, and it was even discovered that pieces of Etik seeds of life had landed among its six moons, and the beings there began to settle upon the water world with hesitant welcome from the Etikun. In this, the Sheen Empire saw opportunity and began to colonize Etik in the presence of housing the life of the Six Moons, trading their gases and usurping the precious minerals and chemicals that lay beneath Etik's borders. With no law across the three worlds, Eden formed a military patrol of Yerm and humans to attempt to police and monitor what they could. But after 200 years, the introduction of space travel among three worlds had bred strife, corruption, and conflict, with only the shaky hopes of a tri-world council as a possible solution to injustice. And yet, unknown to these three worlds, far off from the light of the red giant star on the planet of the Owl, 
the seeds of life that had been planted on their own world developed into wretched, horrible creatures. For the world of the Owl had lost all of its life-giving properties in the millions of years since their creation. With the Owl locked away in sleep, the forgotten beings cried out in vain to their long-lost creators, developing technologies that could prolong their life, but not save them and only give them the means to observe their cousin three worlds from afar with envious and vengeful eyes. And now, in space, the Chronicles of Art Whistler. Looks like I've got a meeting with a Sheen patrol ship. This is Captain Egris of Noxion 9. Your vessel is infringing on Ram space. Identify yourself. Ark Whistler of Eden. I've been floating for a few weeks now. Any chance you fellas could help me out? What is your business? Uh, I'm lost. Lost? What is your destination? I'm trying to get to Six Moon on Edeek for a freelance job. Ikik is at least 300,000 kilometers from here. We find it odd that even a human can become that unfamiliar with our space. Well, to be perfectly honest, I'm a real shitty pilot. <laughs> we are being fired upon by a new ship. This is your to die. Good, fire me too. Then you are thinking this 
Send an egress. Come in, Noxin. Somebody answer me! Sorry for not picking a better time for a class reunion. Ah, I wish Fuck. Is that you? What's going on? We've been hired. And we like to work fast. Rock, this is insane. You can't be serious. Can you say that? But why? Looking out for the bigger picture. Remember that, buddy? Enough of this. We have been ordered immediate execution. See in hell, Aquista. Tune in next time for the continuing chronicles of Ark Whistler. Last time on the Chronicles of Ark Whistler, an assassination at the Tri World Council, and Ark Whistler ambushed by an old rival. Our story continues on board the Sheen Ambassador Omniarch ship, the Kyleen, above the planet Eden. Enter. What do you mean, Ark Whistler's still alive? What we mean is you have failed to fulfill what we have financed you for. You're insane, bitch. We blew six holes in his side and detonated a fusion missile. Ark Whistler is being held in medical captivity aboard Nox Ship 9, which you also failed to destroy. I saw the goddamn wrecking! Yeah, we got real good! Obviously, we did it! Omniarch, I never agreed to work with this imbecile, and this other one just watches me and doesn't say shit! I am obligated to fulfill the completion of my mission and nothing more. Shut up! That is enough. What the hell is that thing doing here? We we'll keep it with us as a precaution. Now when we found you, Rock Quaid, you were blubbering, raving mess. This device was instrumental in restoring your sanity. If you cannot complete the task we have given you, we can quite easily take your mind back. Let me do this alone. I don't need fools clogging my thoughts. Harrigan Rex is heir to royalty and you will treat him as such. Yeah, that's right. Royalty! Yeah, royalty of worms and gas-feeding rayfish. <laughs> God damn it, you paralyzed my arm! Be thankful it was not a more useful limb. Get out of my sight, don't it? It is dangerous to keep him in that boy. He has a personal vendetta against Hawk Whistler. This ensures he will complete his task and be right for blame. We are still facing inquiry for the assassination of Lapige at the Tri World Council and must keep distance. Anything that you require assistance for, Lord Omniok? We do not do anything ourselves. Our high name is clear. But we can't be associated, even with you, Benjamin Miles. Understood. Meanwhile, aboard Nox Ship 9. Pressure here. I need both his legs free. He's losing fluids. We'll have to keep this brace on his forelimb or it'll start to die. Dear sons, what is that? This is the human we captured, sir. The one who was attacked. Yeah, they are horrid creatures, so many appendages, it's revolting. One more limb, and he'd look as disgusting as you two, Ortoy. Yes, yes, Lord Egress. Make sure he's contained and locked in a cell as soon as he's healed. But Lord Egress, there are no free cells on the ship. <laughs> Imbeciles! Put him in the cell with the Ortoy who tried to escape yesterday. Yes, Lord Egress. Well, let's close this and get him to the brig, poor bastard. Huh? Wait a minute, what? What's going on here? Uh, wait a minute, hold on. Hold, wait, wait a minute. Hold, hold, whoa! Don't worry, you'll receive a fair trial in six cycles to face your trespassing charge. Good luck! World-class service aboard this cruise. That depends on the world, human. Th who said that? Down here, friend! Another one of you guys. I am Pacoon. We are a toy of Rom. A toy? Of Rom? I had no idea there was another race besides the Sheen on Rom. There are others besides us, but uh, we're kept in the shadows. But why? Appearances. 
Would I want everyone in the three worlds to know your cities, ships, and resources are built and farmed by us, little guys? You guys build everything? You must be seriously skilled. I'm a genius. Modest, too. Well, at least as far as starship maintenance and trapping mechanisms go. Trapping mech? Then wouldn't you be able to get us out of here? No use. I tried running away already. I may be a genius at tech, but I'm no pilot with these little arms. Pacoon, get us off this ship, and I'll fly you out of here myself. You're, you're a pilot? I'm the best pilot across the two suns. Uh, wow, okay, uh, stand back. Damn, you really know how to use them. You have five arms? Quickly, get ready to pick me up and run once the door opens. I'm not much of a sprinter. Wow, what a strange couple of days. Yeah, I missed you too, LA. Pacoon, there's a magnetic field holding the ship down. Can you disable it? I'm already on it, Ark. Take care before they escape. Oh gosh, here they come. Take it easy, Pack. Just give me the win. Don't get cocky yet. Let's get out of this system first. Tune in next time for the continuing chronicles of Ark Whistler. Chronicles of Ark Whistler. Ark Whistler's old rival, Rock Wave, was revealed to be working for the Sheen Lord Omniarch, and Ark Whistler blasts off Noxship 9 with the help of a runaway named Pakun. And now, on the planet Eden, the Tri World Council meets once again. Once again, the Tri World Council shall come to order. We will proceed with the continuation of previous business as well as the current procedure of the assassination of Lakij of Vitik. I invite to speak now in Vitikun of Vitik, Lakij. Peoples of the Three Worlds, Lakij was my father, and his loss does not sadden me as much as it does invigorate the need to continue his speech. I am thankful to Dr. Yopin Jakal for inviting me to speak in my father's stead, and I wish to proceed with his concern of Sheen influence with on my world. With all due respect, Council Presider, Enmity of Ron will not continue to listen to baseless accusations of our people. Silence. Council Presider, we apologize for our brother Sheen and offer condolences to Lacking of Etic. We would hear her speak unfettered. And without interruption. Please continue. My thanks to Omniarch of Ram. My father was adamant about acknowledging the presence of Sheen trades in our peaceful world. A world that at one time thrived without businesses of any kind. We are now overpopulated with the peoples of our six moons as a result. And if Yatik is to survive, we must address the monopoly of Sheen trade in our system. Omniak of Ram, do you wish to respond to this? We respond in gratitude and thanks for Lakeen, her persistence and honesty, and the honor she brings to the legacy of her fellow Itikun. It is true that Ram Gosses have run business among the six moons of Itik, but it has come to our attention that these moons, particularly six moon, contain illicit businesses of their own. Six Moon wishes to know where Lord Omniarch's evidence is. Garlock runs legitimate businesses on Six Moon. Well, if that is true, please explain this recording. We gotta keep the gambling going. We gotta keep the cheap labor. And we gotta keep the eating code out of your teeth. And I want the keys dead. What? Garlock has never said that. This is false. This is forgery. Garlock of Six Moon. 
You will be held on trial for the assassination of Lakini. Escort him away. No! No! Galan's no assassin! Galan just runs business! Galan just runs business! If I open your call, do you think it's true? Do you think Garlic is the one who killed my father? Garlic is a Dida of Six Moon. There is known to be many illegal activities the Dida partake in for their businesses. But for him to clearly list his crimes like that, it seems convenient? Yes, Lakeen, it does. Meanwhile, above the sixth moon of Etik. You ever have any good news? A coup and Kinsha douse that engine fire? I'm trying, but it's blown out the fuel cells! One more hit on the side and... That's gonna happen. I never thought they'd chase us all the way out here. We Sheen always finish what was begun. We will ensure you pay for your trespassing charge. Ark and Bakun make a crash landing on Etik Six Moon, and the Daida named Galag is suddenly arrested for the assassination of Lakij at the Tri World Council. And now, in the underwater depths of Etik, a gathering of Etikun celebrate their traditions in hiding. The water is life. We give thanks to the water. For all we breathe, and all we work, and all we live. Let us now leave our own waters to our shapes. And show the inners of ourselves. Casting. Who is that there? It is Laktik, my elder Imla. Laktik. What brings you to us? Do you wish to show us your waters? My waters have been clear for a long time, Elder. My river leads me from here. Do you know what you say, Lactic? You know that those who leave are no longer Itikun in our eyes. I know that well from how you disowned my father and so my sister, Kazdeen. They speak on your behalf, and you treat them like bastards. You insult our elder, Lakti. Yes, we mourn for Lakish still. But he spoke in his own voice, as does Lakki. And accomplish nothing still. We are dying in love. More will come to E.T. More and more, until there is no water, no work, no life. And you sit. Resign to it like cowards in your ritual! My dear Lactic, we have never asked that any remain against their will. Our traditions accept the flow of the cosmic waters, even if it means our end. That is surrender! And I will not accept it. So the greater oceans tide. 
May her rivers stay clear. Meanwhile, on Six Moon. <laughs> L.A., take a rest, will you? Pacoon, are you okay? Wow, is your life always this insane? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, hand me that spark wrench. Come on, come on. Stop! No offense, Art, but would you mind if I give it a shot? <laughs> you know, I thought breaking you up would be a good idea. <laughs> hey, where's the gas ventilator? Doesn't have one. What? You're telling me you don't use Southstorm gas for your fuel? Humans in Yurm have their own natural resources for ship fuel on Eden. The Sheen want everyone to believe only their gases can power spaceships. Jeez, all of my life was on ramen, not ship nine. You think someday I could see Eden, Art? Makun, I'll take you around the entire system if I can. Oh, great, the communicator still works. Punch him through, L.A. Whistler, are you in hell? Better than that, Dak. Found ourselves the best mechanic in the three worlds. Pagoon, this is, well, my only friend from home. Dak Yopin Jakal. Dak Yopin what? Ah, pleased to meet an Otoy of Ra. You know my people? You're your, right? You guys are the oldest of all the three worlds' populations. Yum have been here for many ages, thanks to the living cosmos. Ark Whistler, the leader of Six Moon, has been arrested for the assassination of Lakish. Galag? Isn't that a house of merchants? Why would they want to assassinate an Itikun? Itikun? Aren't they extinct? Fix it! You see, Dak? He's the real deal. Ark Whistler, you must listen. With Galag gone, Six Moon is without a leader. It would be chaos for a time, and dangerous for you to stay there. So it is imperative that you... Dak! Dak! Hakun, what did you do? It wasn't me! Limbs up! You are trespassing! Come on, up! You're going to the house of Garland! I thought he was arrested. Shut up! You're going to his brother, newly crowned leader of Six Moon! Art! Are you okay? I think so, but I think we might have to hold off on seeing Eden for a bit, Pack. As the light fades on Six Moon, Ark and Bakun are taken to the lavish and densely populated House of Galar. Pay your respects to Galar, father of Six Moon. I thought his brother was Galar. Whoever sits upon the high throne of the House of Galag is Galag. And who may I ask are you two? My name is Ark Whistler, and uh, this is Bakun. Hi! Ark Whistler. The name tickles the mind. And what brings the two of you to my moon? We're, uh... uh tourists! Right. Uh, heard one can live like a king on Six Moon if one has the right stuff. And do you have the right... stuff? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you intrigue Galig, Ark Whistler. Galig has been weary since his brother's unjustly incarceration, and normally does not entertain trespassers. But you spark Galig's curiosity. Have you heard of the ephemera gas? I've heard a lot of things about a lot of things. This is the most intoxicating gas in the three worlds. Most of Gallic's clients cannot withstand it for more than a few seconds. Gallic can breathe it for 30. If you can last longer than Gallic, you will be welcome here as honored guests. If not, then it will be less welcome. Uh, Pakun, you want to give this a try? Well, I would, Ark, but I don't really have any olfactory senses, uh, so there's really yeah, no I, way okay, I'd okay. be able to... I'll, I'll do it. Hmm. Mm. 
older list, but I can field already much much stronger than uh, ugh, any ROM concoction. This gas is not from ROM, Arkansas. A concoction of Gallic's own design from across the two suns. Dreamy. Mm. Makes me think of my dad. Yes. <laughs> Lost in your memories? <laughs> Uh, I'm a little late on that. I'm, I'm kind of there half the time anyway, but uh, still. Mm, nice flavor. Always wanted to be a pilot. Ah, uh, think he's had enough? Oh, don't worry, Dak. My dad lets me try this all the time. I swear I've got a knack for antique spices. No, no, don't, don't take it away. I, I want more. Amazing. Almost two minutes. Uh, Alec has not seen this since. It takes spices. They're rumored to be extinct. Not if your dad's the head ambassador of the Eden Military Academy. Of course! Of course! Damien Whistler! Gallic was only outdone in Espemra by one other human. His son does not disappoint. I'm happy to make your acquiescence. But I don't want to. As Ark Whistler enters a deep sleep of memory, what secrets from his past will be revealed? Tune in next time for the continuing chronicles of Ark Whistler. Invading Nongship 9, Ark and Bakun are captured, but later befriended by the leader Galag. And Ark Whistler falls into an intoxicated sleep that brings his memory to his youth. And now, the Eden Military Academy, ten years before our story was begun. Seven, I'm falling behind. You want to make squad captain, you better fly better than that, Wing 5. Wing 3, watch your passes. You almost blew right through me. Don't slow me down for your ass. He's leaving the course. Wing 3, this is your squad captain. Return to course before Sergeant Crow is frying our ass. Can't stop this ride now, baby! <laughs> Wing 3, pull back. We're leaving the training field. The boat shut down, authorized. Wing 1, are you shutting my ship down? No, I'm shutting you down. So I don't have to shoot you down. To the stockade with him. Oh. We'll see what a couple of days in a cold cell will do to cool your heels, Cadet Whistler. Though I'm sure at this point you're quite familiar with the place. Yeah, they left my bed lumpy just the way I like it. Tell them I want room service on your way out, eh? You're a shame and a disappointment, Art Whistler. And if you'd weren't the pilot you'd were, I'd have tossed you out of my ranks on principle. Oh, good thing I'm the pilot I am then. Got this cushy stockade all to myself. Not the only one, buddy. Hey, haven't I seen you around these bars before? Rock Quaid. Best marksman in the Eden Military Academy. <laughs> well, damn if this ain't the hall of the brightest and best. You got that right. You know why that is, don't you? Yeah. Because Sergeant Carlos hasn't seen his mother since the Earth days. Because we're the best. What got you in here? Mm, just flew my wingship outside the course. For about uh, five miles or so. And I shot the helmets off of six of my teammates' heads to show them they couldn't aim shit. What do they do? Lock us up? Because we're too damn good for <laughs> You might have a point, Rock. I know I do, Ark. Oh, my apologies. Cadet Whistler. You are Commander Whistler's son? Hmm, yeah. 
Meanwhile, a group of representatives of Eden, Eti, and Ra debate the imminent future of the Tri-World Council. Honorable Lakish asks to reconsider. I will not reconsider. As long as Ambassador Omniog is present at this meeting, I will not take part. Must be present a speaker from all three worlds. Then why do you have this human here? Why is Eden allowed to voice? Honorable Lakij, I understand your position, and I will stand with you. Ambassador Omniarch, if this Tri-World Council is to succeed, the eminence of Sheen Gas Trade will give you no greater or lesser voice from one in any other world. Oh, we accept this, of course. Oh, we seek only equal treatment with our brother and sister worlds. <laughs> oh, that is most noble of you, Lord Omniarch. To seek equality after years of trade that has made my world a wasteland and a commodity to be usurped. I am truly moved by this. We do not appreciate this tone, Honorable Lakij. If you have evidence to convict us with, come forth with it. In due time. For now, I will participate in the formation of this council, that we may have a body of law to hold each of us accountable to. May your rivers stay clear. And yours, Lakis. This meeting is adjourned. We needn't remind you, Commander Whistler, nor you, Dr. Theopine Jakal, that the Sheen Empire will not stay silent in the face of accusation. Nor would we expect you to, Lord Omniarch, lest you be punished unjustly. Indeed. <sighs> I don't know, Dak. Maybe the three worlds were better left alone. The living cosmos is cause and effect, Commander. Yes, and 200 years ago, humans caused space travel between three planets that had never seen each other before. The effect has been chaos ever since. Not all chaos. Learning, communication, understanding is possible. The next generation will learn. Hmm. Feels hesitation? You know my son, Dak. I've done all that I can to transform this defense military into an instrument of peace. But I've failed to be a father amidst all that. Ark Whistler is talented and intelligent. And rude. Single-minded, belligerent. I'm worried I caused it, Dak. Spend time in experience, then. Teach your wisdoms. Pass what you have learned. Yes, maybe you're right. Come. The representative of Six Moon wishes to have a place on the council as well. The other five may follow soon. Akij may find that Eden is not the only one with more than one voice. Everything is arranged. The ship is untraceable, mixed with designs from all three worlds. And the autopilot. Our best fighters couldn't track its evasion. This will require immaculate precision. We provide nothing less, when we're in miles. In ten years' time, you will come to know me by a different name. On the Ark of Thrawn. Tune in next time for the continuing chronicles of Ark Whistler. Last time on the Chronicles of Ark Whistler, Ark Whistler's renegade acts as a youth make his father Damien weary as he attempts to bring the Tri-World Council into existence, while a secret plot unfolds between Lord Omniarch and the mysterious Wenrin Miles. And now, the Sheen Lords of Ram discuss their hidden agenda for the future. We approach the appointed time. There will be no turning back from this. How long must our facade be kept? The one known to us as Winrin Miles has foreseen the Tri-World Council coming together in ten years. The trade will suffer, Cyrus! 
The Empire will be held in greater villainy if the Tribe World Council is formed. Our actions will be accounted. They shall be accounted, then. Westorm will lose many Altoy if the nutrient supply drops. This will cost us great labor, and a chain reaction will spread soon. Enough, Unum. Westorm will suffer, yes, as will all our brothers. Greater sacrifice is greater earn. Elok speaks our mind. Southstorm gases are rationed for our own. Or toy will die as they must. But what Lord Almiaka Khan, our ambassador, has served us well to this point. But we hold great reason for suspicion. We are weary of Omniaka's will. Are their actions for wrong or their own? Omniak has now its sheen as we are. That must be held as such. As one is worth, so too the other. So too the other. May the light of Ra not shine the suns. Meanwhile, in the private quarters of Commander Damien Whistler on Eden. Look, Dad, I know I went too far in the course. I promise I won't disobey Sergeant Sit down, Carlos anymore. I believe you are familiar with Ambassador Lakij Abitik. Oh, uh, clear waters to you, Honorable Lakij. You are most certainly Damien Whistler's son to greet me so properly. Dad, I, I don't understand. Ark, did I ever tell you I was accepted into a spice smoke ritual with the Ambassador? Only a few species besides the Itigun have been allowed to partake. Do you know what it is? Uh, no. It is a truth speak. The name of this spice translates to a breaking of a dam. It only lasts for a few minutes, but during that time your honest self opens. Read this. Inhale deep and hold it before you let it out. Why are we doing this, Dad? Because things beyond yourself will help you understand yourself. Breathe. <coughs> My mouth is on fire. <coughs> that is something to appreciate. The Itikun have far more sensitive taste palates than humans. <coughs> Ark, do you have a problem with authority? <laughs> what? Go on. Answer your father. I... I don't like being told what to do. No one does. But your duty is to your people, your planet, and your comrades. Do you believe this? I... Do you disagree with your duty, son? I want... to follow my own duty. Hmm. I, kn I know what I'm capable of. I can't serve something I don't understand. There is wisdom in that, young whistler. My own people are reluctant to stand with me, even to have themselves represented amongst the other worlds. Why would they do that? They would follow their instincts and traditions that are in danger of dying out. I... I cannot fault them for that. It is impossible to make people understand things, Ark. You need to follow your instincts, yes, but don't find yourself an enemy to that which you don't understand. Dead. I don't think I understand much of anything. That is the beginning. That's the perimeter warning. Ark, head back to your squad. Stand by your comrades. Okay. Uh, okay. Ambassador, get yourself to safety. I will see your son there first. Clear waters, Commander. And you, Lakeej. Your father did not easily persuade me to show you that ceremony, young whistler. I hope you will appreciate it. Ambassador, I thought you were at odds with my father for giving Eden two voices. Commander Whistler respects my position and desire for equality amongst our worlds. The roles we play in the bigger picture will never reflect all feelings, young one. Remember that. May your rivers stay clear. And yours, Ark Whistler. What's the situation? Unbreaking now each ship with an accident supply base. The new delivery skills make it impossible to track or identify. What is it, Carlos? I haven't the faintest guess, sir. It's got no design or flight pattern similarities to any ship of the three worlds. Have you tried communicating? <laughs> hmm. 
no answer, sir. Whoever they are, they seem to just want to bring their place down. Send the wing squadron to intercept. Tune in next time for the continuing chronicles of Ark Whistler. Time on the Chronicles of Ark Whistler, a deadly attack from an uncatchable ship from nowhere while the sinister plans of the Sheen Lords of Ram unfold. Now, the Eden military's wing squadron attempt to take down the Phantom Fighter while the young cadets listen in terror. This is Wing Blue. I've got the bastard inside. Take him down. Yes, sir. What the? down. Wing Red, back me up. Got me, Wing Green. God damn it, I can't lock him. What do you mean you can't lock him? He's adjusting his speeds too rapidly. Why isn't it destroying his ship? I'm hit. Wing Red, I need help. Copy that. I'm on my way. Oh my God, he just backed up into him. It didn't even damage it. It's, it's, it's coming my way. Okay, Wing Leader in pursuit. Cover me. What? How's he backing at that speed? Ah! Wing leader is down. Repeat, wing leader is down. The squadron. What can we do? Are we gonna have to fight? All right, that's enough. No one here is fighting. Right now, you are all going to the bunkers below, and we'll await there for further instruction. Rock. That ship just took out the entire wing squadron. They can't keep up with them. Yeah, and they're sending us into the bunkers. Like children. It's bullshit. We could take that fighter down ourselves, man. Damn straight we could. Ark, let's commandeer a wing ship. I'll take Gunner. You take Pi. What? It... If Sergeant Kromos ever found out. Easy, man. Everyone's running around like idiots. We'll just slap our ID badges on someone else and duck out. We'll be heroes. I... I don't know. Come on, man. You said it yourself. We could do this. You want to sit back and watch or you want to do your do? Alright, you're... You're right. Come on, let's go. Meanwhile, in the Eden Defense Military Central Command... Commander, cannot proceed with this. Are needed to continue tri-world negotiations. Enough that. I'd be letting everyone on this planet down if I didn't stand up and do my duty just like everyone else. Ready, my fighter! Commander Whistler's wing ship already leaves the docking bay. What? Impossible! Enemy ship intercepted. Wing ship pursues closely. Commander, we are running a look on at that ship by remote shutdown now. Remote shutdown unsuccessful. Prevented from inside. Who's in there, Trollos? One of the cadets? Impossible, sir. Every ID talk was scanned. It's keeping up with amazing maneuvers. I've seen that piloting before. So have I, Krolos, but it, it, it can't be, can it? Damn it. Hit? Yeah, not enough to notice. Have you got a hit on them yet? <laughs> Bastard, you've seen me before I shoot. It's imitating our movements. It must be some kind of AI. <laughs> well then, let's let him imitate this. Crazy, what are you doing? Bringing us into a free fall. Are they following? Yep, still following. What are you doing? Get ready to shoot when we flip up. You're insane, Ark. You're goddamn right. <laughs> Best marksman on the planet, Rock. You're goddamn right. Oh, no. Huh? When you hit the left fusion engine, we gotta eject. You don't gotta tell me twice. <laughs> Huh? Hands up! Oh, great. Tune in next time for the season finale of the Chronicles of Ark Whistler.
Last time on the Chronicles of Ark Whistler, the Eating Wing Squadron is decimated by the Phantom Fighter, but Ark Whistler and Rock Quaid steal the Commander's wing ship and take the fighter down. However, as the dust settles, Ark Whistler finds himself in the stockades once again. With all due respect, Sergeant, why am I here? I took down an enemy ship that caused the death of the whole wing squadron. I should be given a medal for this. Silence! Fallen soldiers are not yours to use for your own benefit. You disobeyed direct orders. You stole the commander's private wing ship. You used lethal force and combat procedures at your own discretion without the use of a commanding officer. And... The debris from the crashed ships caused the blackout at the infirmary. What? Seventeen people are in comas. One is near death. Sir, I... Ark Whistler, I don't think you realize what you've done, or the failure you've caused me to be as a sergeant of this academy. However, that is no longer my concern. What do you mean, sir? I've been relieved of my duties for the time being, cadet. But I fear that pales in comparison to what's in store for you. Dad? You'll refer to me as Commander Cadet. Correction. Former Cadet. What? There's nothing that can be done. You're being discharged. But we... I saved the day! Be quiet. I took down the ship! I'm a hero! You caused... You caused harm to innocent lives. Someone could have died. That is not the duty of a soldier. Maybe my duty isn't to be a soldier. Damn it, Ark! Did you have to put people at risk for that? Just to be a hero? This is not what I brought you into a spice smoke ritual for! Well then why? You show up to be a dad for five minutes and suddenly I'm supposed to understand everything and do what I'm supposed to? Ark, I know I haven't been a good father to you. After your mother died, I became lost in my work, trying to bring the three worlds together. I admit I became lost in the bigger picture. But you took your actions for your own. And you must accept responsibility for them. Ark, listen to me. The ship was run by an AI. This was made by a covert operation. There may yet be some good you can accomplish. But first, you need to tell me who your gunner was. What? Why? Are you gonna turn me into a rat? Ark, we can find out whose prints were on the trigger. It's a, a simple matter, but I need you to tell me. As father to son, don't leave me alone. It was... Rock Quaid. But it was my idea. Never mind. As I said, it would have been discovered either way. Now, when you're released, speak to Dr. Yopinjakal. I can tell you what your future might hold. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, in the darkened quarters of Ambassador Omniarch. Henry Miles, please understand. There was no way we could have known a young cadet would have been able to outsmart the autopilot. Insignificant. All that is understood is that a human has undone your grandest efforts. Who is he? The son of the Eden Commander, Ark Whistler. He's only a boy. We see no reason to regard him as important. Our, our limbs. We cannot move. You must understand, Omniarch of Hram, that your place is a peace among thousands that must behave as needed in the greater game. This is not your glory, nor the glory of the sheep, but of the forgotten, who will be forgotten no longer. Oh my God. I show your mind your downfall. Do not regard this Ark Whistler as someone to forget. For as you know, Lord Omniak, those 
those who are forgotten are not gone. Meanwhile, in a secret hangar bay. What is this, Dak? Transport. A ship of your own. Will not be wise to stay here after the battle with popular opinion. You're telling me. Even on my way over here, I was nearly mobbed by people whose loved ones were in comas at the infirmary. I really messed up, Dak. In space, then. Find future redemption as brother humans left Earth. Suspicious is the Phantom Fighter and reveals a greater plot than she colonization. Must understand what will happen. And you think I'll just find that out floating amongst the three worlds? In the hidden corners of lives and cultures, our friends and allies are Whistler, as well as enemies. You may discover bonds that even a tri world council will never understand. There's so much I don't understand, Dak. In that, you are not alone, Ark Whistler. What the- Found you, you little son of a bitch! You sold me out, you little rat! Ra what are you talking about? They came for me! I snuck away while I was clean, but they found me based on your testimony. I'm getting discharged. So am I. They would have found you anyway. The bigger picture wouldn't have made a difference. Bullshit! That ain't the point. You willingly gave me up, buddy. You were supposed to keep your mouth shut and look out for your comrade. It's your idea, Rock. You take charge of your own destiny. Oh, I am. Believe me, I am. <laughs> Be gone. There has been enough violence. Stay out of this, Yerm! Be gone! Fine. But one day, Ark Whistler, I'll see you again. Ark Whistler broke Quaid. Her disobedience, misconduct, failure to recognize authority, and harm caused to the peoples of Eden. You are hereby dishonorably discharged from the Eden military. Present arms! The game is set, the history told, and the past connected with the future. Stay tuned for the next season on the continuing chronicles of Ark Whistler.